श्री श्री रास विहारिणी जू जय थे श्री वल्लभादि शखी जय सब वैष्णव को जय श्री कृष्ण ब्रज किशोरी सेवा ट्रस्ट रीडिंग श्री हरि राय जी के बड़े शिक्षा पत्र दिस डे सेवन लेटर टू वर्स फोर टू एट A diamond shines in the center of his chin. His eyes are decorated with coal, whilst a black dot is applied between his eyebrows. Tika 4. The beautiful diamond jewel which brightly adorns his chin represents Sri Chandra Chandravali ji and is described in detail in the commentary on Sri Madhurashtakam. When Sri Thakur ji is tasting the nectar of Sri Swamini ji's lips, there arises an excess of this nectar and it flows down from their lips to his chin. The coal in Shri Krishna's lotus petal eyes is applied in the mood of divine love because his glance falls on devotees in all 10 directions. Then the Raja devotees are enchanted and forget their household duties. Their eyes are slanted and playful, tinged with red and always rolling, expressing many sentiments. As Shri Gosaiji has described in his Lalita Tribhanga text, through his eyes Shri Krishna bestows the taste of love on his devotees in all 10 directions everywhere. Shri Ashoda ji has applied a black dot between his eyebrows to protect her son from evil glances and this dot looks so lovely that it steals the mind of all those who see it verse 5 when he dribbles saliva one should know that this is really the nectar of his lips through his pastimes as a child this nectar becomes easily attainable tika 5 When nectar flows from Shri Krishna's lips, Shri Ashoda ji thinks it is a child's dribbling, so she kisses him and tastes this ne- lip-, lip nectar granted to her through his childlike pastimes. In the path of grace, there is no acceptance without tasting this lip nectar. Shri Krishna appeared for the purpose of accepting souls into his eternal sport. So, how does Shri Ashoda ji, the elder, elderly cowherd folk, and Shri Nandarai ji attain this lip nectar? That is why Krishna dribbles like a child. He feeds his cowherd boys, boyfriends with morsels of his meal that have touched his lips and the Vraja Gopis simply live to taste that same nectar at every moment. The lip nectar that flows when he plays his flute fixates birds, animals and all that hear it so that they have one pointed devotion to him alone. In this childhood pastime, the nectar of Shri Krishna's lips is easily attainable by Shri Swamini ji because she asks Shri Yashoda ji's permission to take him away to feed him and play for a while and no one thinks otherwise when they are alone she prays in the mood of secret love shri krishna is always ready to grant that taste of his love whereby the longings of his devotees are satisfied verse 6 shri krishna likes to put his big toe into his lotus mouth whereby he enlightens those souls who have embarked upon the way of devotion as to appropriate path and action Tika 6. Shri Thakurji is lying in a lovely cradle and again and again pulls his big toe into his mouth with both his hands. He ponders thus, the mind of millions of devotees is fixed upon my feet. These devotees have been feeling burning separation from the experience of tasting the nectar of my lips for a long, long time, wondering how that nectar would taste. The Lord is unable to bear this pain of the devotees and so, through his player's child, secretly grants them that taste. Moreover, Shri Krishna also wonders, what is so special about my feet that all these devotees are worshipping them? I shall also t- experience that taste. And so, like an infant, he sucks his own toes. The Raja devotees surround him and the Lord invites them to enjoy divine play with them through his, divine, through his sidelong glances. Sometimes he sucks his thumb, whereby he absorbs into his lotus face those gopis who left their bodies when they were unable to meet him in the forest. That is un... antargrahagata sometimes in a place in a secret place they emerge from his face and he sports with them after which they are reabsorbed into him to onlookers he just seems to be sucking his thumb for sri swamini ji and some other gopis this is a signal for them to join him in play in this way shri thakur ji rewards everyone with the taste of his nectar according to their eligibility verse 7 Shri Krishna's neck is adorned with a fine line of pearls and an enchanting gold bead necklace. Tika 7. 
The line of pearls around Sri Krishna's neck looks so lovely. Beside them are a necklace of gold beads and one of precious stones. By wearing these, Sri Krishna is telling his devotees that he always keeps them on his neck, tied to his own person. The three types of necklace, pearl, gold and bejeweled, represent all the various types of devotees, so the Lord lovingly ties them to himself. Verse 8 Sri Krishna's chest is further beautified by a curved tiger's claw, claw, plen- tiger's claw pendant, a pearl necklace, and another of gold which hangs down to his abdomen. Tika 8 The tiger claw pendant on Sri Krishna's chest is very lovely and it is Sri Yashodaji who makes him wear it to protect her son. It also symbolises many other of his pastimes with the Vraja devotees. Scratching with the nails is a part of Sri Krishna's play of love. The tiger's claw nails are not straight. Neither are the hearts of many of the devotees whom Sri Krishna wishes to make his own. By wearing it on his chest, Sri Krishna also declares, Only my pose is curved in three places. He thus purifies the devotees' hearts and takes them into his own. When Sri Krishna goes to various devotees' houses, there is there needs to be a guard. At that time, the spiritual form of Sri Narasimji, which is related to Sri Krishna's intimate pastimes, appears and guards the door so that Sri Krishna can sport fearlessly with them. This is why there is a lion situated at each doorway, which is related to these grace-filled pastimes. And this is why Sri Krishna wears the claw pendant on his heart. All of his jewellery is related in some way to this divine play, and Sri Takuji is very pleased to wear it. He immediately discards anything which is in direct opposition to his play. Acceptance into this path of grace occurs exclusively by the grace of these Braja devotees. For this reason, Sri Krishna wears the tiger claw pendant. Close to it, he wears a string of pearls and a beautiful garland knotted with gold beads. The gold necklace is for Sri Swamaniji, the pearl for Sri Chandravariji. He thus constantly keeps them both in his heart. Here we conclude Tika 8. We will continue tomorrow on day 8 with verse 9. Aj Kayan and Ki Jai Ho Ji. Sab Vaishnavon ko Sadar, Saprem, Sananda. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Jai Shri Radhe.